I cannot stop thinking about this film Flo that I recently watched. If you haven't heard of it, Flo is this animated film, the one with the cat on a mystical journey. And it recently won an Oscar. The crazy part, it was made entirely in Blender, the same 3D software that I'm using to make my short film. So seeing Flo take the gold felt like a personal victory. It's like finally proof that a free open source tool can stand toe to toe with the big boys from Hollywood. But beyond the Oscar buzz, Flo Straight Up inspired me on a creative level. I've been working on this animated short about a bedridden boy who has this hilariously stretchy limbs who's trying to sneak a forbidden sugary drink. My short is kind of a slapstick, wordless comedy and flow is this wordless adventure drama totally different vibes on the surface but flow showed me that you can tell a compelling story without a single line of dialogue and in this video i wanted to talk about some key areas that flow is influencing my short film in storytelling, camera work, lighting, and character animation. In Flow, the characters don't speak at all, yet you feel everything. The tension, the curiosity, the wonder, just through their animation and the camera work. My film is also dialogue free and it's been challenging to stick to the old saying, show don't tell. Like, can I get my story across without words? Sometimes I think maybe I need a, a narrator, but, if I follow in the footsteps of flow and master visual storytelling, then it's not needed. For example, there's a scene in the film where the statue of the cat gets submerged. For me, this part created anxiety of what lies ahead, and I did really feel for the cat. In my film, I'm rethinking how to communicate the plot and the boy's emotions to the audience. Maybe the boy's forbidden craving for sugar can be shown through visual cues, perhaps an imaginative glow around the vending machine or his longing gaze. I started focusing on little character animation details, maybe a squint in the boy's eyes as he reaches for the soda or the way his overly long arm wiggles and trembles. I like that how Flo avoids a common trope of making animals act like cartoonish humans. I think Gintz the creator described it as having naturalism rather than realistic animals or stylized as you come to expect in animation films especially films by Pixar that animals are like humans. I personally do like the stylized approach and try somewhat to achieve this in my film but it requires a lot of skill, skill that I don't have. I'm terrible at character animation, so I'm relying heavily on video motion capture for my characters and some Mixamo stuff. Then I tweak it to give this stylized feel. Most of what I'm showing you from my film is more of an animatic, but like a high quality render. The character animations I will do last, so I don't know if my approach is going to work, but I think I need to aim for this naturalism feeling and character movement too. Oh, and the camera work in Flo, I could gush about it all day. There's this thing Flo does where the camera just glides. It's like it's floating along the river. Maybe that's why it's called Flo. It rarely cuts harshly. Instead, it drifts from one scene to the next in these long sweeping takes. When I watched it, I was saying to myself, why am I playing it safe with my camera? My film starts with a bored boy confined to a hospital bed, so I'm keeping the movement at first to a minimum. But as the story progresses and the action picks up, I need to make sure the camera picks up too. Maybe continuous shots string together and make the camera a character in the film. For instance, when the boy's arm stretches down the hallway to reach the vending machine, the camera could track along its length, even be attached to the hand, creating a thrilling, elastic point of view shot. Gintz also mentioned he adds a bit of camera shake as an animation layer. I started doing this by using Ian Hubert's add-on, the camera shake one, it's free. 
By keyframing the camera and then layering on a bit of shake or sway, I can avoid this sterile CGI look and instead give my short a human behind the lens touch. Let's talk about lighting because Flo did something magical there as well. The film has this beautiful, almost dreamlike lighting, like the soft morning sun filtering through the trees or the moody blue tones. The lighting set the mood flawlessly in every scene. Applying this to my short film, I've started to view lighting as an integral part of the storytelling to tool rather than an afterthought. For example, the hospital at night could be bathed in cold, pale light with sharp shadows underscoring the boy's loneliness and the forbidden nature of his quest. In contrast, the vending machine could cast a warm, colorful glow on the boy's face when he finally reaches the forbidden drink. Okay, now let me geek out on some of the tech for a second. So Blender offers two main render engines, cycles for realistic lighting, but it's slower and noisy, and Eevee, a real-time engine, super fast, but historically a bit less realistic when it comes to lighting. Gintz made a big deal about using Eevee in some interviews. He loves how fast it was, how it let him see changes in real time and work at a blazing pace. And I can see why. The EV renders per frame were about five to 10 seconds each. In contrast, a single frame from Avatar 2 took about one to eight hours each. That's crazy. What if you need to change something in a scene? You might have to wait days. But for my film, I decided to go with Cycles meaning it provides better visuals, especially when it comes to realistic light. But this film proves that it's not the render engine, it's the artist, because the film looked amazing. But I will continue with cycles as if I change the EV, I will have to change all the materials and change the lighting too. The other thing that I was surprised about is the use of Blender for water simulations with the Flip Fluids add-on. I always thought Blender was terrible with water simulations. All my experiments didn't work, but I guess not with, especially with this flip fluid add-on. I would normally use Houdini for water sims like I did in these scenes in a past project. And in my current film, where we've got this stretchy, squishy quality of the character's limbs, I'm using Houdini's vellum nodes. Maybe for the squishy effect, I could have used Blender as well. I'm not sure, but this film proves that Blender almost has all the tools you need for making a feature film. So yeah, this whole experience of watching flow and geeking out over it has basically recharged my uh, project with new ideas. I feel like I've just had a conversation with a fellow animator who's probably miles ahead of me, and he's passed down all this wisdom to me without even realizing it. At least now, next time someone scoffs at Blender or says indie animators can't match big studios, I'll just point them to this film. Anyways, thanks for watching. It's back to work for me. Peace out.